Would you like to know how to add a medicine to Emus Web? Or go a step further and prescribe a medicine? Or do you want a quick guide to prescribing for someone new at your practice? Well, this video is for you. My name is Jignesh Sangani. I am a practice pharmacist based in South London. I've set up this channel to help you get the most from Emus Web and learn about general practice. If this is an area you're interested in, then I'd recommend you click on the subscribe button below and smash that notification bell. In this video, I will cover how you can add a medicine to a patient's record quickly, as well as how you can prescribe a medicine. You can see the timestamps next to me, so you can skip to the relevant section if you need to. This is my third video on learning the basics for Emus Web. If you've not already seen the Emus overview video, or the Emus Web consultation video, I would recommend you check out the links to those videos. So, let's get started. When I first started using Emus Web, I learned a lot of what I'm going to talk about through trial and error. This was a, a time-consuming way to learn. Hopefully with this video, I will save you time. Now, as always, we're gonna start from the home page. You can access the medicine screen by clicking on the ribbon. So if we go to the top and you see that picture of a medication, uh, of a pill, you can click there for medication. You can go to the link uh, on the quick launch menu and click on medication. Or you can go to the top corner and go to EMIS, care record, and then go to medication. So there's three ways you can potentially access the medication screen. Once you're in the medication screen, you can click on add drug. Now the first screen you see here at the bottom are all the allergies or adverse reactions the patient's had to uh, medicines or, or any of, anything that they've had previously. So you can see straight away you know, what things to avoid, adverse reaction to benzoflumethazine 2.5. So, we know that if we're prescribing this medicine, um, it will come up and prompt us. And in fact, let's try it out. So if we put in bendroflumethazide 2.5. There we go. Adverse drug reaction. It comes up in big letters. So do not use drug. So what I'm going to do now is um, add a drug and keep all the defaults the same, just so you can quickly see how to add a medicine. So I'm going to start off with uh, atenolol. Um, so I'm going to put in A-T-E. Now as I put it, you can see that the EMIS has already picked out all the options going towards atenolol. So what I'll do is narrow it down by putting in the strength. So I'll put in atenolol at A-T-E 50 and it, and it comes up with the first option is atenolol 50. So I'll select that. Now here we've got some big warnings here. Now this is obviously for example, but um, in other situations, you know, read these warnings and see if it is appropriate to carry on. Here, we're gonna just override it. Then we choose the dose. Um, so I'm gonna click on one each day. That's been uh, one of the sort of doses that's coming up. Um, quantity, so let's say 28. It's already on acute. And then we, we could issue or issue later. So issue, I'll, I'll cover a bit later. For now, issue later will mean that the medicine is just added to the patient's record and, and their medicine list. So let's click on issue later. So now here on, under acute, you can see a 10 level, 50 milligram, one each day, added by me. There you go, you can see my name. Now, let's do the same thing again, but this time let's explore all the options available to us. So we go back to add drug on our drug and um, this time around we'll add in a 10 or 25 milligrams so I'm gonna start typing like before ATE and I'll narrow it down to 25 so it's the first one on my on that emis picks out I click on a 10 or 25 again we've got the warnings pop up so you know it's really useful actually I find these really useful in that uh, it helps me make sure I'm not missing something say for example contradict on contraindication Beta blockers should be avoided with the history of bronchospasm. So for now, we'll override that. Now, you can see we've got doses in black and we've got them in blue as well. Blue doses are the ones that I've created myself over time whenever I've prescribed this item previously. 
uh, and you can see that there are different uh, quantities as well so you've got the standard one which is one tick taken daily which emis would would recommend uh, you know 28 tablets then you've got ones that i've done myself one daily 58 six tablets one in the morning seven tablets and then one to be taken daily 84 tablets you can remove these if, if you want for now i'll choose the the 56 tablet option so i'll click on that and see the quantity has gone straight to 56 i don't need to type it in for this one now before we chose we we kept it the default options and that was an acute this time we're going to put this medicine on repeat so we're going to click on prescription types and we'll click on uh, the acute tab and you can see we've got options repeat repeat dispensing and automatic now repeat dispensing i'm going to do a separate video explaining that for this example let's keep it on repeat so we'll click on repeat now you can see we've got a few more options here um, if it's a variable use item you could click on variable use I, I don't really use that much to be honest and if it's something you want to prescribe privately you could click on private authorized issues now the idea of this is um, you can have a number of issues before the patient needs to uh, contact you maybe to get a medication review or maybe to have it reauthorized so I could do say four issues so that would um, last four issues and once they had their fourth issue um, they would need to contact us to to have you know it reauthorized again at my practice we, we don't use this option we use the medication review date on the, on the records but that is there for you to use if you want to equally you could put in a review date here specifically for that medicine so for, for a 10 or 25 we could put in a review if we check the review box we could put a review for say 21st of January 2022 and then you'd get an individualized medication review date for that medicine. Option, uh, optional prescription information. So I find this section really useful. I use it to communicate information to the pharmacy or the patient as well. Actually, to be honest, our, our team as well. So let's say the ophthalmology clinic had started this, then I could just put something like started 23 October. One. So it makes it clear why this medicine's been put on the um, on the records, and, and we'll leave it there so you can see what it looks like. We could put information on patient info. Now, if you put information on this box, it would print on the right hand side of the prescription, and and it would be a part of the repeat part of, of their um, paperwork that they receive when they get their prescription. I'm not sure how many patients actually look at that. So if you, if you have something that you want the patient to see, you've got better chance if you put it in the pharmacy info box and ask the pharmacy team if they could alert the patient um, and hopefully they'll pass on your message. So the other, other things to be aware of is if we go to the top, we've got a generic and trade switch option. So if you click generic and trade switch, You can change it to the branded at the 10LL there isn't a brand available at the moment but that's useful if you if you're prescribing say an asthma inhaler and we're recommended now to prescribe asthma inhalers by brand here in the southeast of London um, so if you didn't know what the brand name was you can use a generic to trade um, button to switch from generic to the branded version and similarly if you've got a branded item and you don't know the generic name you can use that option to switch it to the generic um, if you want to access the BNF, you've got the drug information button there, and this will show you the BNF and give you information about the medicine. And similarly, you've got, down here, you've got the um, same option here. If you go drug information, you can access the BNF. You can scroll across there. You can quickly see their current medication if you want to have a look. So we can see that they're already on a 10 or 50. You can see past medications as well. You can have a look there. Allergies, which we covered a bit earlier. And then you've got their diagnosis, their problems. There we go. So for now, I'm going to issue for later. So I'm going to click on issue later. And you can see a 10 hour, 25 milligrams, one each day, a little message to the pharmacy team of the clinic started 23rd of October 21st. And that could be a message for us as well. So anybody prescribing knows why it's there. So now I'm going to talk about adding a medication through a consultation. Um, but before I do that, um, if you're finding this video useful, please click on the like button below. It will help more people see this video. So what I'm going to do is go to consultations. I'm going to go to 
add consultation. So we've gone to add and then we click on consultation. Let's put in for admin note for this one. And we'll click on medication. And like before, you, you can add in the medicine. So let's say we want to add bendroflumethazine 2.5. Very similar process to what we've already been doing. If not the same process, to be honest. Just select 28. Uh, we'll keep it as an acute. And we'll issue it later. So it stays on the record, but not actually issued yet. But as you can see here, on the medication, within the consultation, you can see the medication recorded, bendroflumethazide, one in the morning, not issued. And we could say something like, started, started bendro, bendro for BP. Now, if you add a medication in this way during, within a consultation, it just makes it clear to everybody why you've added that medicine. So really useful when people are looking back at notes. So I'm just going to save that now. And you can see the medicines within the consultation. Now, if we go to medication, you see bendroflumethazide, one in the morning there, and it's, it's got my name there. Now, let's say I wanted to issue a inhaler here. I can select Irima, I right click on that, and then I select issue. Now, all prescriptions are mostly sent electronically. Um, so for that, I would need to go to the EPS nomination section just to, if I wanted to change anything here. So if I click on EPS nominations, I could select a one-off uh, nomination by clicking here. Uh, I can select the pharmacy where it says name and I can select the postcode here. And if I put in the postcode press search, then I can find the pharmacy that way. But I'm going to come out of there. The, I could also change which chemist it comes into and you can see the range of different chemists I could go to that were local to the patient, which automatically come up. So I don't want to change anything, so I'll keep it the way it is. If I wanted to do uh, an EPS4 prescription so that a patient could take it anywhere, I can change, click on change or and select EPS4. But for this, for the purposes of this video, we'll, we'll keep it everything the way it is at the moment with the default. It's going to that particular chemist that's shown up there. So now I click on um, approve and complete. As soon as I click on approve and complete to issue the prescription, I need to put in my PIN number, press OK, and that will send that prescription to the pharmacy electronically via EPS2. And you can see now on patient records, if you look next to Irima, you can see the date that I did the prescription, you can see my name, and that has gone through as an electronic R2 or EPS2. You know, EPS so, so that's how you prescribe a medicine. So hopefully you found this a handy, quick guide to adding a medicine and prescribing in Emis Web. Did you find it useful? Would you like to see other videos on Emis Web? Let me know by leaving a comment below and feel free to share this video with anyone you think would find it useful. Think newbies. If you've not already seen my video on adding a consultation in Emis Web, you should be able to see that video now in the top corner and you should be able to see another video worth checking out below it. So that's all from me for today. Until next time, bye for now.